The Purge by G.M. Danielson Narrated by Beatles Fanize It's just the beginning. This morning, when I signed in and saw what was happening on No Sleep's subreddit, I could not have imagined the outcome. It's sheer creeping horror and the sinister indications of a darker doom yet to come. They're calling it The Purge. Three days of uninhibited debauchery. Much like the film series of the three movies from 2013, 2014, and 2016. I suppose the mods think they're going to stop the trolls shit posters, hacks, and pornographic content creators by giving them all a day to feast, then cracking down on them like trapped rats. What they don't realize is they've created an unstoppable evil. The death notices began arriving not long after the purge began. The first happened on March 19th at approximately 10 p.m. No Sleep announced on their homepage that user Easy Misery had passed away due to unknown causes and that he would no longer be submitting stories to the subreddit. No Sleep released a public statement that evening expressing profound regret at his loss and they had planned to celebrate his life and contribution to the creepypasta world by putting his most popular short stories on the homepage in the coming weeks. David Cummings of the No Sleep Podcast even tweeted that he would be producing an episode dedicated to Easy Misery stories and would donate the proceeds of the episode to his family. The one thing No Sleep did not do was stop the purge. They should have suspended it. It was the right thing to do, the respectful thing, the decent thing, the only thing that could have stopped the disaster from spreading. But they didn't. That midnight, I received another notification from No Sleep Another user had mysteriously died. Blue Exenia 9 had begun posting a series of photos on her Instagram that midnight, uploaded in a sequence. The first was a chilling photograph of a rope made from her father's dress ties. The ominous black and white was followed a half hour later by another this time showing a perspective shot from the floor beneath looking towards the ceiling where the ties hung knotted through a metal ring. Then came a third photograph of the room, empty of all furniture but for a lone chair situated beneath the garish ties. The final photograph was of a hangman's noose tied at the end of the ties. Blue Exenia 9 was found dead at 2 a.m. Her cell phone auto lock disabled. Screen opened to the camera as if in readiness for one more photo. No Sleep did not post direct links to Blue Exenia 9's Instagram, only reported the death. Not that they needed to. Everyone went and did the Google search. Shockingly, her Instagram post went undeleted the entire night. People began posting on masses on Twitter about her and her Instagram post. After the chilling hashtag, the purge tie rope began to trend. The Instagram suicide photo sequence was taken down and Blue Exenia 9's account hidden. 
presumably by her parents. After the second death of another no sleep member, I couldn't go to bed. I suppose I was haunted by the notion that something terrible was just beginning. In a strange and I guess voyeuristic way, I didn't want to miss any developments. I didn't mean to be one of those internet people, but with such horrible things happening, of all places on a scary story site, it was impossible to resist. The no sleep homepage remained quiet for an hour. Despite the inactivity of both user and mod posts, I noticed that the mods removed the death notices for both deceased users. For another half hour, I puzzled over the meaning of this bizarre and unfeeling action. Only later did I realize that it signaled more was yet to come. At 3 a.m. on March 20th, a new notification appeared on the No Sleep homepage. I stared for what seemed like an eternity at my screen, unable to click the post for fear that the user might be someone I knew. At last, nagging curiosity got the better of me and I checked. Sure enough, a third user had died during the night, oddly at about the same time as Blue Exenia 9. The deaths apparently had occurred close enough to each other that no slate mods missed the one. When I saw the third name, the third victim, I drew back in shock and angry tears started streaming down my face. User GM Danielson had passed away in his sleep. Memories flooded back of the kind man who had given me permission to read one of his scary stories. Many of my subscribers dearly loved our collaboration of the African Boana Spider. I had been preparing to read another of his stories and had a partially drafted email waiting to be sent to him concerning the newest creepypasta. Now, it was a message he would never receive. When my mind cleared enough after the initial shock and grief, I shut down my laptop and retreated to my bedroom in horror. The realization washed over me. Everything those bot posts said concerning bad comments and reported stories was just all a lie. A diversion from the real terror that was happening. The purge wasn't about site maintenance. It was about getting rid of us. It was the system, the supernatural side, cleaning house, clearing us away forever. The sheer goddamn irony of it all. In the past five hours, three were dead. There were basically two more days to go and there was no telling how many more would die or if the deaths would rise in frequency. The thought of user deaths possibly happening every minute left me numb. Though the inquisitive urge to check up on the terrible developments happening gnawed at my mind, I resisted the desire to turn on my computer. I knew what I would find would be would be no more terrible than what I already knew and had read, only more frequent and distressing. It is 4.30 a.m. now. I have no way of knowing how many more users have perished. At least, no way I dare to check. 
but I am certain with that cold, subconscious assurance that many, many more are dead. More great authors, more great people, more friends. The question that now engulfs my mind is whether I am next. And if my time will come in the remaining two days.